families and they they just don't have i guess the the I don't know the self-respect and awareness that you gain as after you have children and, and all of those things, they're just, you know, burning it and having fun. And I, I think it's, I can respect someone wanting to do, you know, modifications on vehicle and, on, and, and enjoying it, but to gun it down our streets and all hours and as loud as it is, it's just ridiculous. So um, I, I think that, um, if we could in some way get the apartment complexes, if they don't already have something like that written into the leases or, or to even if they do start to follow up with it and then reporting from there um, to the city, if that would help. Yeah, and then Randy. Fine enforced. So Randy, this is really good. We're about to start the meeting. Can you mm -hmm. make a note with your email address and phone number in the chat section of this call? Oh, you know I've never used Zoom before. Well, it's at the bottom. <laughs> it's at the bottom row of the screen in the middle. There's okay, I got participants it. Participants chat and, and share screen. So put your name, number, and issue right there. Uh, and then we'll follow up, okay? Actually, if you, if you would put your email, Randy, that would be oh, as well. more helpful yes. than your phone number. Excuse now, me. I yeah. do want to say that one of the issues that I had is, I, I know I emailed you and you received that, but there's no point of contact on your site for, do you have a community outreach person or any kind of member at large? Well, yes, we do with the okay. mayor's office uh, and then our board, actually, we are the community. That's what I was wondering on your board, yeah. if you had one that went out and actually talked to community members, like physically walked out or someone that you had a phone call that you could, because a lot of people don't want to write a lengthy email. I didn't have a problem yes. with it, <laughs> but well, we'll, we'll get to that on the meeting. We should probably get okay. started on the meeting. No, and, no problem. Thank so you. Put your info on the chat. Okay. Um, so uh, let's see, David, do you think we should get going here? Yeah, Hi, um, I just want to assure you, Randy, that we will not give your email address to anyone. Oh, I don't care. I don't have a problem with that at all. Like, okay. I'm an open book. Anybody can feel free to leave me. I'm the person that walked across the street to confront the, the, the drivers and find out what's going on. I, I have no no um, shyness about that. If they want to come knock on my door, I promise you, I will greet them. And depending <laughs> on how they greet me, I, it, it'll go either way. But we, so far, they've been receptive, most of the okay. people that I've talked to. I'm not sure like about to, the white truck, but we'll see how that goes. I, I would like to um, extend Brian's invitation to everybody on the call to enter your name and email address in, this, in the chat box. And that way, um, we can contact everybody who's interested in traffic issues and share our news and uh, calls, calls to action and whatever else uh, we, we need to do. Yeah, so we'll, um, on that point, you could also put in just as few words as possible the issue that that is most pressing, the issue you want to address. We don't need a lengthy message, but it'd be nice to be able to categorize so we can um, maybe you know, organize that according to the issues as well. I do you have one more issue with the trash that I want to bring up too? So I don't know what point to put bring it in that the up. Chat box. Put okay. It in the chat box. Okay. We should get going on the meeting. I thank okay. you very much, Randy. No, the, no problem. I just wanted to make sure I touched on that. Okay. So we we're just going to get started. We're not going to wait for everybody to roll in. Um, we understand those first five minutes are very you know challenged for people, especially when they're first time on a Zoom call. But what I should do right now is uh, introduce uh, our, our chair, the, the, the Capitol Hill Neighborhood Council chair is David Shear. He's gonna be our jockey tonight. Uh, this is, uh, uh, he's really good. And we're gonna be sharing with you uh, several resources so that you uh, have the ability to um, express your ideas on an interactive map, but also to understand uh, the work that we've been doing um, over the last, you know, half year uh, plus in, in the practices we've made and where we're going from there. Uh, and just so you know that um, you can find your issues, we're also going to discuss um, the petitions and that sort of thing. So if we could ask everyone right now uh, to put your um, speakers uh, on, your mics on um, silent right now, and then if you want to speak, you can toggle it toggle it off so or toggle the your microphone back on and that'll be a good indication for us that you want to speak but um you can also raise your hand and that's an also helpful way for us to just organize the meeting so so why don't we get going here um we have uh maybe Dave, what david can do right now is share with you uh our 
a, a, a page on our community council website, which actually has an, uh, an update on the transportation committee's uh, work. And maybe David can share that with everybody while we're, while we're going here. Um, so I urge everybody uh, to go to chnc-slc.org for this and many other uh, items of interest uh, that we've, our very active community council has, has prepared for the general public. Um, and this, this is shared with over 500 people uh, right now. And so we have, we have a pretty good uh, network and we, get, and we have all sorts of activities, uh, but also projects and, and, and issues that we're dealing with. So that's a really good resource. So if everybody can look at this, what I, I just wanted to share with you, uh, maybe we can go to the very top. David, if you can just show us the photo of that. Uh, um, this is an issue. Uh, Anyone have any guess of what this issue is? It's what you hear throughout the night now. And it's the heavy truck traffic that uh, coming from the gravel pits mostly, but also from the oil refineries and it goes down 300 west and then goes up 600 north to the overpass or it comes in uh, down, down the hill on the 600 north overpass and goes up 300 west. In addition to that, we have heavy trucks ripping all the way down 300 west going downtown to projects, cement trucks and also gravel trucks. We also, they're now starting to use Victory Road and then weaving their way through, you know, narrow Columbus and down State Street. We uh, are working right now, we, the, we've worked with the mayor and they've reached out to uh, the offending uh, uh, parties and we're now working on a, a traffic management plan, a heavy truck traffic management plan. And uh, so let's just go back for a quick outline. Uh, David's gonna scroll down a little bit and we'll go. So the, uh, I urge you to read this thing, uh, but the first thing is a heavy truck management problem, uh, uh, excuse me, project. Uh, and we, we want to move the trucks off from 300 West down to the high capacity 400 West. That's interim project, but we've also, our committee has traveled to the North part of, our, of, the, of the city and we found some untapped capacity up there that we're, we're working on uh, changing the entire behavior of the of delivery truck uh, traffic. Number two is the commuter cut through traffic, which uh, partially due to the heavy truck traffic on Third West has been um, found their way into the neighborhood to cut through, to get down to another bottleneck at, at State and, and uh, in North Temple. And, and, and then carry on with that behavior throughout. We're, we're trying to change that. The, another issue is the legislature and capital uh, building, uh, excuse me, uh, employee cut through traffic. Uh, we're tr we are working right now to educate and to um, modify their traffic patterns. There's a traffic light right now that's uh, being proposed and we have been working with them for several months on that and we've gotten a lot of engineering uh, concessions around the neighborhood but we're still working on that light and that's a, a point of major concern and and we have all political or governmental groups and everything uh, excuse me associated groups working on that project we have a big meeting next week on that particular item. Item, item. And then and if David can scroll, scroll down, down a little bit so we can see number four on this list. And guess what? Spe I'll go a little, yeah, speeding motorcycles, tuned to cars, modified pickups, Randy. <laughs> and, and everyone else, I, I'm assuming everyone can hear this. Um, and we've been working with um, the, the, the area of businesses, but also the residents, Capitol Hill Neighborhood Council, of course, the Marmalade Library, and we have the manager here tonight, Salt Lake City Council, the Mayor's Office, Salt Lake City Planning, Salt Lake Police Department, Transportation Division, UDOT, Utah Transit Authority, Wasatch Regional Front Council, and uh, Regional, excuse me, Wasatch Front Regional Council, the, the schools, Washington Elementary and West High, and others. So this is not um, a new pro, uh, effort, and it's, and it's very well organized. We have a lot of of support from all these agencies and, and developing a, a much more uh, 
acceptable plan on, on many fronts. So um, that's the introduction. Um, I think what we could maybe do right now, um, I could probably get a little update from, why don't we, Dan Love um, on, uh, well, excuse me, uh, David, do you think, we, do you have handy the concept board? Uh, yeah, while yes, everybody's here. I have it right here, here. hang on. We're, everyone has access to this really nifty interactive mapping tool that was provided by Salt Lake Transportation Division. And we've been rooting around there a little bit, but we invite everybody to go to conceptboard.org and David's going to dig up the, uh, the so here it is, here's a map. This is actually available. If you go to chnc-slc.org, this is in that update, okay? So you, we all have access to this map. Maybe David can maybe scroll a little bit, a little higher off the ground so we can see a few, just a big picture of what we're able to do here. This is the, the neighborhood and, the, and its surroundings. And because there's influence uh, on our neighborhood from the neighboring uh, region. Uh, and so ideas are being thrown out here. And we invite you to go to this thing and, and uh, uh, place your comments. And also you can mess with graphics. And what they do is they take a screenshot and update it. Uh, this is Salt Lake Transportation. So they have a, a deeper understanding of the issues. So if we look at the bottom left, corner of this image, you'll see a scale down there. And David could probably zoom up and down so you can see how it works. Um, it's just like, wow, you know, it, it, so the first thing you're going to see when you click on, when you go to conceptboard.org is a, um, maybe David, go reduce it to its minimum, which is what I find when I go to it. And it, it even, so that's what it looks like when you get on. So heads up. Um, you got a lot, a little, you need, just need to play with this, with the scale. Okay. And then once you, once you get it to the right scale, then you work for the, um, the co column and baseline scrolling. So you can find your, find your area and then you zoom in on say the area in question for your issue and make a comment. And, but be careful to, you can, if you drag a comment, like David could probably show us, you, you click on comment and you, pinpoint it, say, go ECB, David, or whatever, and then, or go wherever you want. Um, maybe, Randy, wh what is your uh, address again, or the area that you were worried about? Oh, excuse me. Randy, maybe you can't hear me. But, any Randy? Are we, uh, go off a mute. Go off mute. Okay, yes, so. Yes, I'm sorry. So, so David's gonna do this. Give us a, an address to put his comment, your comment. Okay, I'm at 713 North, 200 West. Okay, so you know, you, what you do is you, you drag comment over there, you, cl you click on a spot, you write your, you know, say, uh, what do you, uh, noisy cars and motorcycles or whatever it may be, and then you can drag the box so that, um, let's see, where's David, where's your comment? He's, so it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, Drag go over to comments, David. He wants me to talk. And then go to Seventh North and Second West. Unfortunately, yeah. this big yellow thing is covering that spot, and I don't know how to move it. Hmm. So I guess we'd have to just sort of put it on top of it. The top. To, actually, um, if you go to Fern and Two Hundred, it's basically Fern. Okay. Well, you know, we're going to go in and fix this yellow thing. I don't know why it's so big. It, it's, I don't know. I, I'm pointing to it on mine like you can see where I'm pointing. I'm well, anyway, so David's going to write a comment. So David's just going to write a almost, comment and drag it. He's just going to show you. Just you're say, almost there. No. If, you, if you know where Wall Street and Fern right there um, at 200, it's, it's right in that little, it, I can see where my house is on the map and it's not in the yellow area. But I'm, I'm trying to show you with my hands as if you're in the room with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> But well, okay. um, I think the, I'm having a little trouble navigating this myself right now, but the yeah. idea is you find the spot where you want to drop your comment, you hit this little comment icon up here, and then you hit it, start, hit start spot, writing. and then you type in your comment, and you and should be able to drag, drag it box. around so that it's not being, it's not hidden or anything. Okay. 
yeah, so that's it. We're going to move on here. We're going to go back and fix up that yellow thing. You know, I don't know how it got so massive and, you know, who put that darn thing in there, but whatever. So, but this is no biggie, right? So they take screenshots and we, if we make a mess, we clean it up, you know, that sort of thing. So this is a really good point. And I urge you to play around with it. I'm, I'm 62 years old and I figured it out. So uh, you should be able to do it. Okay. <laughs> so, so let's, let's move on here. Um, maybe David, we go back uh, to, uh, and now we'll hear from Dan Love. Will give us a little um, update, and later we'll hear from Ken Cross a little update on another part of the neighborhood, and, and we'll, then we'll ask other people. But we're going to just this is basically information and kind of navigating. So we can, and we are also going to ask you to participate tomorrow. We're going to try to finish the drafts of these uh, petitions, and we're shooting for over fifteen hundred signatures. So you know the timeline is, it, it's here. So. Um, Without further ado, if Dan can um, tell us a little bit about um, the petition uh, and, and just the, this, the situation with the heavy truck traffic and how we are going to address it. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Uh, I think Brian's update's great. I'll let it stand on its own. Obviously, there's been a number of meetings. I think that the momentum and the headway is really starting to build. Uh, you're starting to see meetings and people in seats uh, paying attention. And I think if you live here on 300 West, uh, you can attest that the nighttime traffic is all but gone. Uh, now, I, I just ask for your patience a little bit. Uh, we obviously mentioned to the Salt Lake County Health Ordinance that you have to actually pull uh, a permit to operate 24 hours. Obviously, when the mayor's office started calling, my guess is those permits aren't in place, nor will they be in place. So the nighttime hours and the weekend hours, uh, I think if we're taking an honest assessment, I definitely see a large improvement, at least from my perspective, but I think uh, I, I saw David Owens there on the call. He sits in a, probably the most crucial spot, or one of the most crucial spots on 300 West, uh, just from the nature of the turn, people decelerating and uh, accelerating around it. David, do you think that assessment's fair, that we are seeing a reduction? Yes, I think so. Good, uh, and again, I, you know, I think that the frustration as I talk to the many neighbors that I see outside and that I continue to interface with, I know that we're all extremely frustrated, uh, but I think we're going to continue to win hearts and minds uh, with the positivity campaign on trying to tackle this thing together. As it relates to the petition, um, uh, Brian and I just have a bunch of bullet points that, you know, obviously the petition is to, uh, as we're looking forward to some of our meetings, there's a, it almost looks like a agenda item on uh, what is the prioritization of our neighborhood as it relates to our project? And the petition is extremely timely and important to make sure that we've got robust support on our neighborhood. And I think we built a pretty incredible uh, David, our chair, was at uh, all of our I will attest. I was jumping up in semi uh, or semi trucks on 2300 North. I think I got uh, in the cab of five or six windows just to ask them what road improvements we could do to make it a more desirable roadway for them, the industrial areas of the neighborhood. Uh, but here are the points, if I miss one, uh, or if I miss your problem, we definitely want to hear about it. I, this is all encompassing. Uh, I'm not sure, um, Brian, if you the one that has all of East Capitol Hill on here, but I know Ken will speak to East Capitol Hill. Uh, yeah. Commission yeah, can I say one thing? Yeah. Uh, if you have an issue, please put it in the chat box with your email address uh, and, and, and uh, make, we will get it uh, so we can get back to you on it. So we'll work on incorporating that. And I want to make sure I tell everybody, you know, look, the other things, you know, granted, I'm just talking about the, the engine. So speed still t is an issue. We're still having uncovered loads. The amount of dirt on the roadway is uh, disturbing to say the least. You can see the dust cloud that it kicks up. All of this stuff is on the mayor's radar. It's on uh, industry's radar. We've had some interactive conversations with industry. I think Brian or David will update that we're now aware that some of the have community panels or community committees uh, be able to share with them so we can work with All right, here's the goal. Commission appropriate agency to research how current design speeds of heavy trucks and other vehicles correlate safety and quality noise level along 300 West and 10 uh, in Ninth South. Um, uh, again, excuse, excuse me, Dan. One second. Yeah. Hey, um, David Owens. 
Do you yeah. suppose you could put your computer on mute because uh, we've been listening to you for the last couple minutes? <laughs> okay, we'll get back to it. Hey, thank you very much. It might be delightful, just so you know. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, identify and measure growth in residential business and industrial activity along 300 West over the past 30 years. Again, I, I think if everybody can acknowledge on this call, we're seeing a lot of gentrification in the neighborhood. The city's working very hard. Uh, to attract people into our neighborhoods. And the very people that we're attracting, we're now seeing selling homes uh, in the problem area because they're getting frustrated and fed up. And we're starting to see some good documentation of that. And it's obviously something we want to curtail. Uh, test the effects of a temporary closure to eastbound traffic at 3rd West and Wall on morning commute cut through traffic. Again, really the issue here is studying, you know, what does bring relief into our cut through traffic versus what doesn't. Uh, what we're finding is a lot of these agencies lack any plan whatsoever. Uh, essentially, we just do projects when they pop up on the radar and then we see if they float. Uh, I don't think that's kind of how we want to skin this as a neighborhood, but rather spend a little more time studying and making sound decisions and make sure we have a solid plan. Restrict all sectors to loads of 20,000 pounds. Again, that would eliminate the heavy trucks. Uh, you know, like I always say, the insult to injury to the heavy trucks is then I walk over to 600 North and I look at the roadway and I realize that now my air dollars have to fix a problem that's driving me nuts that then results in driving my property value down. It's almost like a triple kick. Uh, but what I'm seeing in those roadways is the bridge at 600 North and the big divot. Uh, the people that live right there on 4th West is causing the trucks to bottom out. Uh, and then the steel on steel connections to their trailers reverberates through the whole valley. Not to mention the ruts in the road, uh, you can see why we need 20,000 pound limits on our streets. And again, I, I will say this to everyone. This is an end road to the inland port. Uh, if the state is so uh, keen on developing sensible and responsible planning. I think it really starts here, right? We have a problem that needs some sensible planning and attention involving heavy trucks. Let's get it solved. Uh, extend 30 mile an hour zone, uh, South 10th North, as everybody's aware. Uh, as I found out the other day, if you drive on 300 West, if you're going northbound and you get to a 45 mile an hour speed limit and you look across the street, the speed limit signs 40. Then it goes 50 and the street limit sign across is 45. You get further down 300 West and it turns to 30 miles an hour like the street should be, especially when you consider we've got a library, uh, a high school and a park that we're doing capital improvements to. So really the push is to try and slow that traffic down, but you're dealing with UDOT and speed studies and as Brian and everybody will attest, it's gonna be an uphill push, but we're, we're hopeful to get there. Um, program traffic lights consistent to speed traffic flow on Highway 89 between 10th North and 4th South. Look, a lot of this is engineering. There's some really smart people on this call. Uh, Kim Krause uh, reached out to uh, Reed Ewing, a PhD at the University of Utah. It's phenomenal to listen to people that their whole life is traffic. Uh, you, you quickly learn that there's a lot more to it than, you know, a simple sign here or knock on a few doors there. It, it truly is a science. So there is some engineering that needs to be done with the lights. Address traffic timing, add green arrows to, inflow, uh, to optimize flow of heavy truck traffic along 6th North, North and 4th West. Look, the band-aid to this, no matter how fast we want to push everything to 2300 North, is we still have the railroad. Uh, and until UDOT builds an overpass from the industrial section straight into State Parsons, that is going to continue to be an issue. So we will see some of both uh, oil. We know we've got uh, the refinery right there that using 4th West. But, but our hope is to get the heavy trucks onto 4th West using that roadway that is beefed up for the heavier weight. Uh, they do run a little bit quieter through there. Hopefully we can move in that direction. There's with that open field to the west, the sound doesn't reverberate like it does on 300 West. So you will see some traffic off of 6 North regardless of what we do, uh, at least in the short term, probably even medium term. Adjust traffic light timing, uh, 10th North and Highway 89 to, up to optimize heavy truck flow to 4th West. Uh, Restriping the eastbounds on 6 North overpass to 8 left and north. Uh, turn lanes, limit vehicle weight on secondary streets. We talked about that above. Uh, closing eastbound access from 3rd West onto Wall. We talked about that, but some of these are repeat as we refine them. So again, I think that as it relates to the 3rd West, um, I don't know, Brian, did we talk about uh, 
six north between third west and second west obviously a speed limit reduction some feedback signs uh, of course third west brian was finally to get you done for the 25 mile an hour uh curve as i like to i don't know how i can't negotiate a sober at you know 25 i don't know damn near impossible to stay in the lane at 25 but we got that 40 mile an hour sign that that five feet in front of it removed uh, it kind of seemed really stupid to tell somebody to go 40 uh through that area but like i said small progress feedback signs are coming engine brake signs are coming. i think some vms sign is coming uh but all of that change it just takes and that's the update and if anybody has any questions i'll field them beautiful well, uh, thank you very much, Dan. Um, thanks for reading all that. I, I don't like reading all that stuff, a big list. So, but if every, anybody wants to be intimately involved in, uh, in, in this petition, uh, put your, make a note in the chat and we'll get back to you on this. Um, the main idea is to work through a program. Uh, and this is, this, uh, actually, uh, we need to follow a program that involves education you know, of all the issues, but also all the, all the methods, and then engine, following the education with engineering to, to create uh, roadways that, that deliver uh, on, the, uh, on our goals. And, and then in the end, we want to enforce. Uh, but that's, we don't want enforcement before we have the engineering in place. We don't want the engineering in place before we understand the, the extent of the problem. So th this is, uh, it is, it takes, it, we can't just send a bunch of cops around to start enforcing the noise ordinance or speeding ordinance or any other ordinance, you know, dust and that sort of thing. We can do that. It'll do, it'll get to a couple people, but we, we need a more comprehensive education program. So that's, that's, those, that, those are the principles that we will follow. And we're working with several agencies following that method. Okay. So, and maybe what we should do right now uh if anybody has uh wants um an issue we're gonna hear from ken on a, just a brief uh representation of of uh what's happening on the east side of this neighborhood you know from north temple of state street east capitol Hill boulevard all the way to ensign peak uh and by the way uh ensign peak is the bell a lot of people ring after coming off I-15 North on 6 North, and 3rd West. I mean, it's, it's a game and we're a racetrack. We wanna change that situation. But so without further ado, let's hear from Ken Cross up on East Capitol Boulevard. Well, thank you very much, uh, Brian and Dan. Um, you guys should all run for president. I'm really impressed, I'm serious. No, I see you shaking your head. Okay, Vice President. Hey, a uh, quick update on East Capitol Boulevard. I had the pleasure uh, earlier today of sitting down with a gentleman named Gordon Wilson, who lives uh, just across the street from the trailhead at uh, Ensign Peak. And Gordon is the head of a neighborhood group called the Ensign Peak Neighborhood Association. And his outfit has probably about three dozen names, three dozen people on its uh, list of neighbors. And you take, into, you take into account that, um, Christian, I can hear you. Oh. You might like to mute. Anyway, um, the Ensign Peak Neighborhood Association has upwards of three dozen members who uh, live mostly on the upper and west side of East Capitol Boulevard. And they are as ticked off about traffic issues up there as the rest of us on East Capitol Boulevard and those of us who are in CHAG, the Capitol Hill Action Group. So in effect, we basically doubled our numbers and we are completely tuned into the same issues and the same approaches and completely tuned into collaborating with Brian mm -hmm. and Dan and the Capitol Hill Neighborhood Council Transportation Committee to get things done. Uh, I feel very encouraged by what I saw and learned earlier this afternoon. I'll just give you a, a hint at what is coming. Um, I've invented this phrase called uncivil obedience. In other words, it means we're going to put some more pressure on the powers that are and the powers that be, but be extremely respectful at the same time. And uh, I will be getting word out to all of the folks in CHAG 
and uh, the folks on the uh, other side and the Ensign Peak Neighborhood Association within the next day or two about an action plan that is designed, intended, and hopefully successful in breaking the stream of racers and lawbreakers that are infesting East Capitol Boulevard and side streets almost every pleasant evening. And there you have it. Thank you very much, uh, Ken Krauss. Uh, we also we have several other people on our committee that I see on the call, but also some new faces. Um, if you have uh, something you want to share with us, we're almost at the end of our meeting here. Uh, but I I uh, and I'll call on you momentarily. But I want you to know that we the the mayor's office, you know, the chief of staff of the mayor has already been on the job uh, recently working working with the industrial traffic. And we have also the, the chief executive uh, officer with the uh, Salt Lake City Police Department is, is on the job. Now we also have our other po um, um, political re representatives and, and many other agencies. We are having a, a pretty, a really good organizational meeting next week. And we, we look forward to setting a, a, a rigorous, but very fast or short term schedule for uh, assessing the issues, uh, de de establishing our goals, developing a plan, and, 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 and creating strategies for, for early implementation. So that is, that is our, our goal and we we're getting a whole lot of support for our efforts because this has been the for poor, poor uh, stepchild of of the city in many respects. Um, as anybody who lives here, you look up in the sky, you know there are a lot of negative influence on the city. This is the oldest neighborhood and one of the fastest growing neighborhoods in the city. And there's so much potential that we don't want to waste. And and the city recognizes that. So we're we're, we're looking for some some. Uh, you know, some, some results, some early results and, and for a very positive uh, uh, adventure here in the near term. Um, anybody have anything you'd want to bring up at this meeting? I see uh, Shike there, Floyd, uh, Teresa, uh, you know, Dave, uh, Dave, Walter, uh, Taylor. Um, raise your hand or take your, your, uh, uh, your mic off mute if you want to, if you want to speak. And, and we'll get to you. Uh, and Rachel there, uh, Jeremy. So raise your hand if you have something to say, Randy. Uh, and remember to trigger off your uh, mute button. Okay. I uh, can't hear you, Randy, because you you're still muted. I did it, I'm sorry. It's stuck for some reason. <laughs> Okay, I'm new to the area. I just moved here in February, and uh, we, we absolutely know the neighborhood in the area, just to start with that. Um, one of the things we've noticed, I live um, on, it's 713 North, 200 West, but it's basically 200 in Fern or where Wall Street comes down. We have a large number of speeders and large, um, we don't have truck noise as, as far as heavy trucks. We have more um, residential, but a large number of ours come from like the apartment complexes. So I started going out and actually even talking to the residents. Like I even talked to one yesterday just to find out. I'm like, are these, can, can I have two kids with special needs, they have autism. So the sound and, and the sensory issues that they have related to the sound, it's just overwhelming for them. Um, I did find the ones that I've spoken with so far are very receptive to slowing down and, and, and curbing what they can. I did find one resident, which we're actually gonna pay to fix his. It's the black car with the red striping. I'm putting $200 into that just to make it stop, just so like y'all know. And hey, I have Rachel, to get a hold of the truck. To that, if you, want, if you want a partner and a financial uh, chip in, I am happy. I was going to approach him myself and tell him I put and it's an, He's a new father. They just had a baby. He's been coming yeah. and with issues with the hospital. Very nice when I talk to him. Very apologetic. He said, it scares my newborn. Like, she, she's shuddering. So I, I understood, and I said, I will pay for it. I just, I, just 
and he's been scooting so slowly over the past two days trying. So to see the effort and see people, you know, it's not always what we think. It's not always the modified mufflers and stuff like that, but um, there is that white uh, truck and I'm going to, I'm going to pay him a visit. But a lot of times I, I don't think they realize, like one of my children even has a tracker on his ankle. He's a flight risk. So if he ever got out of the house, which we haven't had, thank God, but he runs the risk of being, I mean, what if he's flying down the road? My kid gets run over. I mean, even in the crosswalk, you're not safe in that area. People, there should be at, in my opinion, at Fern and 200, there should be a stop sign. I know there's a pedestrian crosswalk and a lot of people don't even realize that that's not a stop sign and stop there anyway, because they think it should be. Um, but it, it's, that's where they're flying down too, because they, they're coming down the hill off a of wall or either they're coming straight up 200 and trying to get to um, 300. So it, it's, it's very dangerous for us. Um, one of the things I did talk to uh, um, before it was, I talked to the transportation division and they can actually do the flashing sign that does the speed. I'm going to revisit that with them and see how long it would take them to get that back out just to slow it. But that's only a temporary fix. Um, and um, to um, uh, a few of you gentlemen earlier and, and said, is there a community outreach person, someone that can go out and talk to the members and, and see, you know, if, like, like I did, just approach and see what the issue is and, and see if just by, you know, pacifying it like that. But another, another thing that I had as an idea, and I don't know how, I'm, I'm from Louisiana, I'm not from here, but if your apartment complexes have you know, written into their lease, you know, noise, you know, ordinances, or your, your, your city has something like that, that you can actually find those drivers. Because most of these are coming from the apartment complexes, especially with the new developments coming up, it concerns me. Most of these are these young, you know, live like you're dying, you know, tomorrow type persons that jet through and they, they don't have the concerns like we have as older adults of children or just in general wanting to cross the street and not be run over. They're just, they're flying up and down. So the apartment complexes are the biggest hazard that I see. Um, and, and there's a lot of them mixed in here. So uh, that's where most of the noise vehicles, and like I said, that's where most of the, the speeders that I'm seeing are coming from. If there would be some way that the apartment complex could enforce it by, you know, finding them every time they catch them doing it, or even the city could if make the apartment complexes, you know, responsible for that if they're not. It's some sort of reporting agency where, you know, if, if it becomes less cost effective, you know, for them to, or more cost effective for them to fix the, the noise issue or fix the speeding than it does to, to actually um, pay the fine. This I is a good our, idea, Randy. Yeah. Very good. We, well, we, we're in the interest of time, uh, if you can articulate that, uh, and, and, and uh, we have, I don't see your email in your notes, in your chat Oh, I put it in your chat box, but I can, okay. I've, I've emailed, okay. Um, okay. I, I believe you're- and just, you're, just so you know, the, the noise, comes from all over the city, from oh, yes. big, big and little houses, apartments, et cetera. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, and the city is well aware of it, and they now are working on a plan for enforcement of the noise ordinance, which is new. And so awesome. this is something they have to get after, but right now we're, uh, there's, uh, there's, uh, this has been a tough year for the city, you know, for the mayor. Oh, I can others. only imagine. But no, we're I, working toward that. So, I do um, have Oh, I'm sorry. I do have right. one other thing and it's not traffic related, so I can visit that later if you want. Yes, I do. Because <laughs> okay. we're about, if anybody, thank you very much. Write down. No problem. Um, and then anyone else, raise your hand. Let's see, who is uh, David Owens? Yes. Can anybody speak to, and Dan, you might be the one that can talk about this. Are we getting any feedback from the community, uh, the, the community advocacy group with Staker Parsons? Uh, and, and, you know. Ryan, I think. Yeah, I can speak to that. There you go. What about Salt Lake Parks and Rec? Where are they in on 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 which Parks and Rec on which Salt, Salt Lake Rec or Warm Springs Park? What on Warm have? Springs Park. We have, we have three parks on West Capitol Hill. Right. Okay. So um, let me speak to Staker Parsons. So this committee went up to the north to the north end of Staker Parsons. And we, uh, we surveyed the entire area between the exit ramp, uh, excuse me, the 2300 north exit and entrance from I-15. We also went down Warm Springs to the southern part to the six north uh, southbound entrance to I-15. And we, we looked at other streets along there. Dan Stevens, who has a couple businesses up there, 
uh, showed us around. Uh, we found some really high capacity, untapped capacity up there. And uh, the chief of staff for the, the uh, mayor of Salt Lake City uh, has already reached out and had good communication between uh, Staker Parson, who's one of the, is the biggest uh, gravel uh, concern in the area. And they, they are, they're, they're listening and, and they want to work with us. So we're making some headway. We really appreciate the city's involvement on that. And we have a whole, we have engineers and mathematicians and architects on our committee. Uh, and we, we're working with the city on that. I, I, I understand that, but what are we hearing from Staker Parsons? My understanding is that they have a community advocacy, uh, advocacy group. Yeah, so we, without getting in too far, they, did, they do understand the 300 West uh, uncovered loads. Uh, we're, we, we have a, we're just opening the door. So we haven't had uh, a complete sit down with them. And this is something that uh, the city, the mayor has, has taken a lead on organizing that sit down with them. And then just a second, you know, one of the things that you were on the call with Chris instead look everybody here is volunteer or has a real job well i don't want to pretend like government's not a real job i used to do that but everybody else has got a lot going on and brian and i's point was this really should be a government first issue to bring industry to the table and then we'll insert our community members as necessary but it's clear unless david you're aware of something i'm not aware of i don't think it's any of our community active board the first acre parcel, so we that down. But covered loads today out of 60 trucks, 40 were covered. So you're seeing there is, they are being responsive to the calls from the mayor's office. I mean, they are a weapon. The, the, the one thing that I would like to speak to, and I'm, and you folks on East Capitol realize this as well, is that the short term, long term. I want to make sure that we're- Excuse me for a second. Excuse me for a second, everybody. Um, everyone, please mute. I'm he we're hearing some people chopping their cereal right now or, or celery. Uh, if you can go, and I'm talking about everybody who's on this call, go to the mute button and place your it on mute. And if you want to talk, David Owens is the person who wants to talk. He unmutes. And then we can all hear him because right now the audio um, is intermittent interference. Thank you very much. And I'll just finish by saying, uh, you know, regardless of where we are in this community, and I think that East Capitol also un understands this as well, we can make a little bit of noise and calm things down for a couple of weeks, but that's not a long-term solution. And so I appreciate everyone looking forward to long-term so solutions. And as you said, it deals a lot with engineering. So, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, raise your hand if you want to speak. I see a lot of people on the screen here. Uh, Walter, Dave, you know, Tom. You know, okay, uh, sh Shakes, Shakes, uh, go ahead and, oh, excuse me, is that, you, you know what, that's not the right name for you. We have yeah, the, yeah. We have the manager of the, this is, this <laughs> we have the this manager. Is Safi, Brian. This thank is you, Safi. this is Safi, the manager of Marmalade Library. Yes, the yes. site, maybe I introduce you. We, Asafi had organized a major open house with all the agencies we have listed, uh, and we were expecting like a 500 person turnout. Guess what happened? Um, you know, three weeks after that was, uh, uh, well, guess what happened? Interfere with that. We had COVID 19 shut everything down, but Safi could probably speak uh, to maybe 300 West and Fifth North and any, anything else you'd like to say. Thank you, Uri. Thank you, David, and thank you, Brian. And uh, um, glad to see everybody. You know, as library staff, uh, we are part of the community, but um, COVID nineteen separated us from each other. We we really miss you guys, and we have been not seeing you for a long time. And as you know, librarian these days are for the community, and without community, my staff and everybody, we are just desperate to see the community. And I hope all of you are doing well. I hope that we can see and meet each other um, soon at Marmalade Library. 
Thank you for building this beautiful library. And you guys have invested millions of dollars as um, uh, building a very nice library. But you know, we have issues here. We have Washington Elementary from the east side, and we have West High School a little over uh, south and, and also west side. And uh, by three o'clock, the building is full. It's almost 19,000 square feet building. And we have uh, students from KG to sixth grade, they are running from Washington Elementary to come to our building. We have so many program, programs for West Thai kids. They're all coming. You know, I told previous Mayor Jackie, I am, I am worried one day that car will hit one of our kids on 500 North. And I do not want to go that far. I think, I think as a community, we have responsibility to raise, to help our children. When Randy spoke about her two kids, my heart goes to her kids and to everybody's kids. We should not take an action after losing our children. This is the time we need to be careful. We need to ask the city to make 30 mile speed limit on 300 west from 600 north toward the West High School. And we need to speed limit from Washington Elementary to the 300 west over the 500 north, 20 mile. And you know, this is scary for every time when you see children's, children's are coming and the cars are not stopping. I have a young group of librarians who always love the kids and they raise this question again and again. And when Jackie came to our branch, I asked her, and I was walking with her to cross the building and it, a car came almost hit me and previous mayor Jackie. And Jackie stopped and then she asked her staff to come to visit Mamari Library. And they came and they are raising so many questions that we cannot do it. But I guess we, if we, all of us, we work together, we ask the city and state, I'm sure we will be successful with this. And uh, I think this is my arch. We all will be united and we all have to work together to control the traffic, control the noise and control the speed. Thank you so much. That's my input. Thank you very much, uh, Safi. I, I, this is a major component, speed of our petition and of our concern. Uh, and engineers will say that it's, if your tr throughput is not dependent on speed, it's more as much as is dependent on lights and engineering. And they are advocates for slower speeds. Uh, we have right now in front of you on 300 West, that's a state highway. And so we need broad support for, for reducing the speeds on that state highway. And we, that's why we're, it'll be incorporated in this petition. And we, we, we will ask you to help us and everybody on this call to distribute the petition. Um, and um, thank you very much. So can we, add, can we hear from Taylor Anderson? Yeah, thanks. Hey, I, I wasn't planning on speaking. I don't live in Marmalade. It's one of my favorite neighborhoods in town. I almost bought a house next to Randy, it sounds like. Um, and I regret every time I visit the neighborhood not doing that. Um, I live off of uh, US 89 though myself, State Street, a couple miles south, so I can sympathize with all of you and a lot of the issues that you're trying to fix right now. Uh, pretty much same issues down here, but they're exacerbated, it sounds like, by those mines and other activities. Um, I just wanted to, to note that we um, have, have, a few of us in the, the community have started an organization uh, it sounds like we would be building on the great work that you all are already doing, and I need to talk more with Brian about it, but uh, the group is called Sweet Streets, Salt Lake City. We're going to focus on Salt Lake City first, and then if there's a uh, momentum, we'll, we'll worry about the rest of the county later because there's plenty of issues elsewhere as well. But uh, when you mentioned amplifying uh, the work that you're doing uh, and, and spreading the petition, that's kind of the goal. Um, we're still on liftoff, and just like you mentioned, Brian, COVID kind of disrupted a big meeting we were going to have in March, uh, but we are still working and um, 
should be hearing more, more from us down the line. So just wanted to introduce myself, the organization, mostly just on social media right now, but um, website is in the works and uh, I would love to help Marmalade in any way that I can, Capitol Hill, um, all of you guys. So uh, I hope to collaborate in the future. So thanks for letting me join the meeting. Thank you, Taylor. Yeah, we'll keep in touch and definitely uh, why don't you make sure we have all your contact info and call us tomorrow. Uh, who else, let's see, is interested in speaking? Who else? Ter Teresa, uh, why don't you take unmute? Okay, um, I don't really have a lot to say, but uh, I just thought I'd, I would like to get more um, involved in what you already have going here. Um, I'm an engineer, uh, so I kind of understand, uh, you know, from like a technical standpoint, the effects that the traffic is having on our neighborhood. I've done a little bit of research about the Capitol Hill neighborhood master plan and, um, you know, I've done some research about what Salt Lake County, um, what the Public Works Department uh, typically implements as a result of, um, you know, traffic. Uh, so, anyway, just let me, um, I get, let me in the loop, and yeah, thank you. Thank you, did, uh, Teresa. Did you put your email in the chat box? Yes, I did. Thank you. Uh, okay, who else wants to speak? Uh, okay. Well, uh, I think at this time, um, does any, but, uh, David, do, is there anything that you want to say or uh, do we have anything else we need to cover at this meeting besides uh, go to our web, web page. We're going to, we'll make periodic updates on, on various meetings we have with the city and the state. Um, David, do you have anything uh, to add? I th you guys have done a great job and it's wonderful to see so, so many people engaged in this issue and in the, in the neighborhood. Um, Randy asked about, do we have an outreach person at the Capitol Neighborhood Council? And the answer is yes, and it's me. Um, I'm the chair, I like to be very hands-on. I receive all the email that's addressed to council at, at the uh, uh, URL for the council and I, usually respond personally. And um, I am happy to have, you know, uh, private conversations, Zoom meetings, whatever uh, you like uh, to discuss individual issues. So please feel free to contact me. Yeah, and I should say also, uh, we have a large committee who is, is focused on transportation uh, issues. And uh, so if you, what David does is he, he sends all these inf emails that go to Capitol Neighborhood Council and he shares them with us so we can follow up on this stuff because we're, 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 we're managing the, the meetings with the, with the various agencies and we also we're building the uh, petitions and, and other issues. Um, and you know, we're, we're actually meeting with the, with the police at site visits and with engineers. So you can... Yeah have a person that actually goes into the neighborhood and goes like door to door for say well no right now it's okay. it's covid time right right no but, but okay um, but even with with like how you did the flyers um i mean i know that you can still wear the mask and distance apart you know knocking even if we're talking from the yard you know at a sidewalk level or something well we like, what i do yeah. with the driver that that's why I'm wondering if there's more people that would be able to. I did that at a social distance. I had the the you know the man. I, I I talked from a distance to him, and now we're communicating via text about repairs for his vehicle. I just didn't know if y'all had someone that went out and actually talked to the offenders. I mean, I didn't. Well, so on that point, we what we can do, and maybe you can join our group uh, in a more active way. But we we will we, we can organize a we do have we do this on. Right now, we've done this on East Capitol Boulevard, 300 West, uh, and on noise ordinance issues. We're, we're meeting more with the uh, city and engineers and that sort of thing, but we also, everyone is on this call, is invited to go out in your neighborhood and share this 
uh, you know, the, the access that we have and go to chnc-slc.org and you'll find it. You can make a comment there. Uh, but, and, but we will, I think it's a very good idea to maybe formalize this outreach effort. So maybe that's a good point well taken and we'll, and we'll develop on that. Uh, anyone else that, okay, yeah, I think it's David. David Owens, who lives, by the way, at the intersection of Wall and 300 West at Warm Springs Park. Just to review, there's a petition that deadline is tomorrow, is that correct? Uh, well, it's not a deadline, but we want to get it ironed out by tomorrow. And can you, can you just overview that in for everyone on the call now? Yeah, this is actually what, what Dan Love uh, read uh, earlier in the meeting. And so what we're doing is we're synopsizing those points. And, but basically, uh, it's, it's, uh, we're committing. Uh, maybe, Dan, you can maybe synopsize uh, if you'd like. Uh, yeah, I'm just not giving you all the fluffy, colorful, happy language that talks about how we want sustainable and cooperative planning from the city. And here's the example in the background of the problem. I stripped all that out, just kind of gave you the points and the highlights. But the petition is going to be just that. It's going to give you exactly what the issue is, which is wide, wide and broad support for uh, messaging, uh, engineering, all of the wonderful things that you've heard on this call. Uh, here are the issues, and here's the support on top of it. But David, it's not going to be uh, as you know, I like to come down and visit you anyway as I walk. We'll make sure that both our chair and everybody here has seen what the proposed petition is uh, so that when it comes to that meeting next week, we can present uh, Chris Morton with a broad support petition from the neighborhood. Right. I, right. I just wanted to make sure that everybody on this call knew how to access it, see it, where to get it. Yeah. Good. We'll email it to you, David. Well, no, I've got it. I just wanted to make Every, sure that everyone else understood. Okay, okay gotcha. Okay, so we, to, yeah. maybe I could ask David Shear. do we have everybody's email? Uh, or is this the thing that we're going to our chat box for? Well, we have a lot of them. I don't know if everybody has done it, but a lot of people have. If you haven't, please uh, type your name and email into the chat box so we will have a record of it and we can contact you. Okay, and I think we're pretty much there. Uh, we went a little long, trying to keep these under an hour. Um, but uh, in the next day or two, we'll, we'll have completed this petition. By the way, we've been working on the petition for over a month. And so it's really close, but we wanna make sure it, it, it uh, is an effective petition. And then we will share that with everybody. It'll be on our website. Uh, we, we want to get the Capitol Hill Neighborhood Council support for it. And, and it'll put it on our website, and, and then we'll also have other means for redistributing it. Well, we're using a change.org uh, online tool, which is the most effective petition uh, application in the world, and that's what we're gonna do. Uh, and that's our plan currently. Is there any other questions? Raise your hand or... Um, I'm gonna be the new person that annoys y'all, I'm sorry. I have, one, I have one more uh, thing, the trash. I don't know if that's a thing that your group handles, but I don't think a lot of people realize that the city no longer picks up. I think they stopped doing two years ago, the bulk items like the rugs or the TVs or things like that. And so we're having, we had a couch across the street for almost a month from our house. I ended up finding a contact to get it removed, but there's a lot of that. <laughs> so, so that's one thing for, that's for David Shear. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and, and because awesome. uh, that's actually a larger uh, thing. That's one of the many things that the Neighborhood Council addresses and they have a direct line with, with, the, uh, with the agencies involved. So, but, okay, but there's I'm a done. program, there's a program. <laughs> and yeah, we've, they've changed that program, by the way, on that particular issue. So we, it's um, because it's, they're more responsible, more efficient ways of managing that trash but when you have a particular incident like an abandoned couch yeah we have an apartment thing. complex across from us and it's a continuous issue yeah okay and and so that was that was one of the things not for this meeting <laughs> no, I, I understand thank okay. you okay 
All right, if, if you can, Randy, if you can document that a little bit, take a couple of pictures or something like that, then we can reach out to the managers of the complex. Thank you. Well, they did a unique thing. They took it from the complex and put it where the choir uh, school was, so it wasn't even on their property anymore. And so it ended okay. up going back and forth and then in servitude and it was a big mess. So I, I finally got it removed, but it took three weeks, almost okay. four weeks. Well, okay. we can help it. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for joining this meeting. We're looking forward to your communicating uh, in more detail the issues you want to address and your volunteerism uh, for getting out this, the, the, the petitions and actually joining our committees, uh, various committees with the uh, Neighborhood Council. And uh, we'll have another meeting in probably three weeks. Uh, we'll see. Just keep your frequent dhnc-slc.org for uh, a notice of the next meeting. Thank you all. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye.